Yep. But the uh, title for this sermon is, Is My Will His Will? Is My Will God's Will in My Life? So we're going to read Romans chapter 12, verse 1. We'll go ahead and read. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Tell me, Father God, thank you for bringing us all here as preachers, Lord, to learn more about you and grow in you, Lord. I just pray that you will lead me through this message, Lord, that you will uh, just give me the words to say and lead me. And uh, just if anybody in here needs something that I can lay on their heart, Lord, just, just lead me to say that, Lord. I love you and I praise you, Lord, and in Jesus' name, amen. 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 So, um, my first point this morning is a very encouraging point that should make your day. Give up. Throw in the towel. You're done. You're toast. You're fired. No, not that type of give up, but more of a giving in. Giving in to God. Uh, <clears throat> more of a giving in uh, sense. You know, most of the men in this room that I've had conversations with, that I've talked to, we all had a past in our life. Or I'd say the men that I've talked to have had a past in their lives where we went through a time where we might have not been so close to God, where we were dealing with a, maybe a secret sin in our life or an open sin or a temptation in our life where we weren't close to God, right? But at some point, as you're sitting here today, we, went, we got out of that lifestyle. We gave up that sin in our life and we followed God. We followed the will of God. Let's read verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, as most of you should know, in the Old Testament, they had to either build an altar or take an animal to an altar and sacrifice it to God to be forgiven of sins, correct? Well, in this sense, God is calling us to make ourselves the sacrifice, put ourselves up on that altar in the sense that we are sacrificing our purpose, sacrificing our service to the will of God. And to live a life that is a living sacrifice, we have to make sure we're living the right life. A life in the will of God, and that might take making sacrifices in our own life, a personal sacrifices. We need to ask ourselves, what do I do in my life? What are things inside of my life that might draw me away from the will of God? Then this is a major question that we should ask ourselves as preachers or as pastors because we represent Christ. When people look at our lives, look at our lives, they look at the way we live, they look at the way we act, they look at the places that we go and the things we accept and they and they coordinate that towards Christ. Right? We represent the body of Christ, so we have to make sure we are living a life according to the Bible. And this is our job as men, as leaders of the home, as fathers, as husbands, as pastors, to lead our family, lead our own personal lives, and our churches toward things of God. And if that means making sacrifices, taking things out of our life that is out of the will of God, we need to be willing to. To do that. And I feel like that is a major problem in Christianity today. Nobody is willing, right? Nobody is willing. A lot of Christians will just say it straight to God's face. You know, God is my way or the highway. They only want to go towards commandments in their life. They only want to look and deal with commandments that fit their lifestyle the best way. So they don't have to be uncomfortable. They don't want to have to turn off the bad TV shows that that you know, have adultery on them or cursing on them, that promote these horrible things because they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Well, I like that TV show. Even though it, it shows all these nasty things, I like that TV show. Or, you know, and, I, and I don't want to have to you know, change my life even though it would mean for the betterness of God in our relationship or in our families. They don't want to make sacrifices in their own life. And that is opposite of how we should live. See, it says, holy, acceptable unto God. We have to live a holy life. And this starts in our own lives. And as whoever's a father in here, in our homes. Our homes has to be a godly place. It has to be a shelter 
for our wives, for our children, that they can go to this place and go to a home of God where they can rest in God, be away from the world, be away from wickedness, be away from sin. And we have to look at when the devil is going to try to creep in to our lives. He's going to try to creep into our families, into our churches, by things that we could allow in, by people we could allow in our homes, by the movies we watch, by the music we listen to. The devil is trying to creep in, right? I heard a saying this last week and, and, uh, from a man, and he said, in our lives, we can look for what's good. We can look for what is better, or we can look for what is best. And in our lives, we have to look for what is best for our families, for our own personal lives, and for our churches. Again, it says, holy, acceptable, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now, only Christ can hold the name of holy. He's the only one that lived that holy life. But that is exactly the life that we should strive to live. To live in, the, in a life, in a, in, in a perfection of a walk with God. Right? In the perfection of a walk with God. A life surrounded by holiness. Surrounded by godly things. <clears throat> Not looking for what works in our life. What gets by in our life with God. But looking for what is absolutely best. For our lives. And if that means taking people out of our lives, taking actions, places that we go, or whatever we do in our lives that dishonor God, if that means taking those things out of our lives, we need to be willing. We need to be willing to do that for God. Jesus Christ, He gave everything up. He lived a perfect life, and He gave every single thing up in His whole life to die on the cross for our sins, right? He was willing to give that up. What are we willing to give up for Christ? Are we just going to keep ignoring what, is, what, what looks bad in our own lives? Or are we going to conform to God's Word and live a life of holiness? We have to look at things that we are allowing into our lives. And if you just want to ignore that and say, you know, well, well other people don't see it. I can just hide. It's go you're going to conform to it. You're going to give in. It's going to show on the outside in some way. And the devil will use those thoughts to make you just seem like, well, I'll, I'll just hide it. I'll just hide this sin or, uh, you know, I'll only do this inside of my home whenever I'm not around people. It's going to come out. The devil wants you to have those thoughts. In humility, we have to look at our own lives. We have to take a step back in our own personal lives and look at what God can improve. And only then can God transform our lives into a life that reflects Him into a life that reflects Him. And that's my second point this morning, which is transform to God. And let's read verse 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your body... Oh, sorry, that's verse 1. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We see all around us. Every turn we go, we have seen where the world has conformed to Satan, where it has conformed to the world. In churches starting to accept homosexuality, in evolution being taught as fact in our public schools, as abortion being praised all around in America, there's evil all around us today. Right? And the culture around our everyday lives is pushing this on us. They're pushing this down our throats, trying to make us accept it, and Christians are giving in. They are giving in to sin. They are giving in to this, this worldly ideologies because that, that's the easiest thing to do. It is easiest to walk with the rest of the group. It is easiest to walk with the world. And the only way we can be accepted by the world, accepted by people around us, is if we agree with them. And if I can warn you today, when we start to accept sin, when we start to lay back on sin, not call it out, just let, just let it be and just kind of ignore it, that is when Satan comes into our lives. That is when we are allowing Satan to come into our lives and work in our churches, work in our families, work in our own personal lives. Right? <laughs> And we just, we, that's allowing Satan to do what he wants to do in our life when we accept sin. When we, when we allow sin to...
to do His work. And, and with the, the major problem in America today that is just erupting with homosexuality. Every inch of homosexuality and LGBTQ is evil. Man. It's going to go to hell. And if we preach it like it's just a normal sin that we can just ask for forgiveness and be just fine, our preaching can go to hell with it. Seriously. We have to preach against it. We have to preach like it is. We have to treat it like it is. Homosexuality is mocking the face of God. It is defying God's perfect creation of marriage between a man and between a woman. And we have to treat it like that. We can't let our feelings for other people be surrounded by, like, by that. We can't conform to, to our feelings in that we have to call out sin where it is in our own lives. And that's something that I worry about, that preachers are conforming. They're not calling out sin where it is in our lives. And that's why our public schools are filled with these nasty people. That's why our churches are, are conforming to this stuff. We have to stand against sin where it is. We have to be set apart in this way from the Lord. Let the Lord transform our lives into His servants. The standards we should have in this life should be based on the Word of God. Amen. In the way that we lead our families. In the way that we lead our churches. In the way that we preach. We have to renew our mind. We have to let the Lord take over our hearts our desires, we have to replace those thoughts and feelings that we have with the pure Word of God. We can't let our feelings overtake us. We can't be stuck in our ways, but we have to seek the way of God and His will for our life. Are we seeking God's will first in our own life? Are we seeking God's will first in our own, in our own life? Or are there feelings or things, personal things that are keeping us away from preaching what God has called us to preach. And that's about all I got this morning, or this evening, this, this uh, thing. But uh, all I can encourage you to stand for God in our lives. Amen. This world is only going to keep conforming, and when we start accepting what is around us, evil is going to come into our families. We have to protect our families, our churches, and us as men have to lose these feelings and being scared of offending people and call out sin where it is around us. Amen. We have to listen to the Word of God to rebuke sin around us and lean on God in our lives. And this is going to, we're going to go through persecution. We're going to go through hatred. But this is what we are called as preachers to do. God has already told us that we're going to go through things and we have to sacrifice our lives. We have to put our lives on that altar towards God. Let's go to the Lord in prayer.